Yesterday, we began to talk about how there are those in our walk of faith that come alongside of us and encourage us. I told you yesterday about a friend of mine, Howard Ellis, who stood there for me and, and said, Zach, listen, no matter what happens, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand in front of you. I'm going to take the heat for you because I see God at work in your life. And I'm forever grateful for that individual. Uh, as we look at the text today, we kind of have that those thoughts running in our minds. We look at Acts 9 and we see this all over the text. There's Ananias at the beginning of Acts 9 that comes alongside of Saul of Tarsus. There are the disciples that lower him in a basket over the wall because the Jews are conspiring to kill him. There's Barnabas who puts his arm around Saul of Tarsus and says, Brother, I'm going to walk alongside of you. We, we have these individuals across Acts 9. And it, it kind of reminds me of something I saw not too long ago on television. Uh, I don't know how many of you like to watch the Discovery Channel, but uh, every year in the summertime, one of my favorite weeks of the year is Shark Week on the Discovery Channel. Been watching it since I was just a little boy. I love to watch those videos of the great white sharks and the tiger sharks and all these different things that are taking place. It's so much fun to watch. Well, a couple of years ago, I was watching Shark Week and 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 the, the scientists, what they did was they took this this dolphin decoy. Now, I'm telling you, they made this dolphin just look absolutely real. It looked like a real dolphin. It even swam like a dolphin, okay? And what they would do is they would, they would tie it up and kind of hook it, and they would throw it off the back of the boat. And when they would drive that boat through the water, that dolphin would actually swim like a dolphin. And it was to mimic a dolphin that was in trouble. And they would post a camera on the bottom of the boat that could see into the water and could see that dolphin swimming. And the idea was with that camera, they wanted to, to watch a shark swim up and attack the dolphin so they could catch a shark attack underwater on camera. And so I'm watching Shark Week and they throw this dolphin decoy in the water and, and, and you immediately are looking at the camera, you're looking into the depths of the ocean and all you see is that dolphin just swimming along. And sure enough, they, they're, they're looking there in the water and they're showing the people on the boat with the fish finders and, and, and those things and, and sure enough, wouldn't you know, the, the, the guys on the boat, they said, look there at the fish finder, there's something coming. The camera angle goes beneath the boat. There you see that dolphin, that dolphin decoy coming through the water. And out of the depths, you see this shark swimming up. And he's coming and he's about to attack this dolphin decoy. And just then, the captain of the boat, he's looking at his fish finder. He says, I'm not sure what's coming behind that shark. But there is a big fish that is swimming behind him. And so immediately the camera pins back down under to the water and you see that dolphin decoy, you see the shark coming out of the abyss and wouldn't you know it, there is an entire school of dolphins that are swimming up from the depths and they swim up and they surround that decoy and that, that shark that's coming up to attack, he actually turns around and goes the other way. Those dolphins were protecting their own from the, the predator that was about to destroy. When you look at Ananias, the disciples, and you look at Barnabas, friends, that's exactly what's going on here. Here you have a young believer in a man named Saul of Tarsus. And the enemy's trying to discourage. The enemy's trying to depress. The enemy's trying to literally destroy this man by killing him. And instead of allowing the predator, instead of allowing the enemy to attack this man, Ananias, the disciples, and Barnabas, like those dolphins, have come up around him. They are surrounding him, and they are saying, listen here. We will not allow the enemy to devour you. We have got your back. We're going to stand with you. We're going to stand for you because we believe in God's work in your life. We know and we have seen evidence of the Holy Spirit at work. And that's what we see here in verse 26 through verse 31 in Acts chapter 9. 
When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to associate with the disciples, but they were afraid of him because they did not believe he was a disciple. They, they look at this, they see this, they know of the threats and the persecution that he had, that he had waged against the church. And they say, man, we're not going to believe this guy. He's just trying to infiltrate our camp so that he can find out who the believers are so that he can kill us too. No way. We're not letting him in the door. And the Bible says Barnabas. Don't you remember him? Just a few chapters earlier. This is Simeon or Simon the, 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 the Levite from um, Acts or Joseph the Levite from Acts chapter number four who sells his field and gives all the possessions to the early church. And it says that they called him Barnabas, the son of encouragement. And so now Barnabas, the one who is known as the encourager, the Bible says he took him and brought him to the apostles and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to him and how he had and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. I love that text because it says Barnabas went to the apostles with Saul. He had his arm around him as they walked in the door. And, and, and the Bible says he had talked to him. So Barnabas had heard that Saul of Tarsus had been converted. All these believers are saying, don't believe it, don't believe it, no way, no how. And Barnabas had the, the, the boldness to sit down at breakfast with him and say, okay, Saul, this is what I've heard. Now I want to hear it from your own mouth. And Saul had told Barnabas what had happened with him. And now Barnabas is standing beside him and saying, listen, I've talked with him. And I'm telling you, there is evidence of the Lord Jesus Christ in this man. He has been saved by the power of the gospel. And the Bible says after this happened that Saul was coming and going with them in Jerusalem and speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. So now those disciples that at first shunned him, those apostles who were weary of him or are wary of him, now they have heard the testimony of Saul. They've heard the testimony of Barnabas. They've seen the evidence in his life and they say, come on, brother, why don't you just get in here with us? And so he begins to boldly preach and proclaim the name of Jesus in the heart of Judaism. And the Bible says that he conversed and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they attempted to kill him. So even now in Jerusalem, they are trying to kill him. And, I, and I'll tell you the reason why. It's because the apostle Paul had actually, or Saul of Tarsus, had actually been one of them. Remember, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He had gone to these very Jews to say, give me the orders to go and get the Christians and I'll bring them back in chains. And now he's preaching and teaching and proclaiming Jesus. They have no answer for him. They can't deny what Jesus has done in his life. And so now they're just going to kill him. And the Bible says when the brothers found out they took him down to Caesarea and they sent him off to Tarsus. They said, Saul, it's not safe for you to be here. We're going to send you to a location where it's safe for you to be, where you can go and preach and teach openly without the threat of persecution and death. And the Bible says in verse 31, so the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace, being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and encouragement of the Holy Spirit and increased in numbers. Isn't it amazing? God's done an amazing work. He's taken the persecutor of the church and now he has saved him. And because of that, there's peace in the region and the gospel is flourishing. Numbers are increasing. Friends, this is something only God can do. And isn't it a beautiful story how they came alongside of the young Saul of Tarsus, didn't allow him to be devoured by the enemy, but said, come on, brother, and walk with us. Friends, just like yesterday, I challenge you with that. I challenge you to be one of those who take those new believers under your arm and say, let's go sit down and talk. I want to hear your testimony and I want to walk alongside of you. Friends, listen, may God bless you and I look forward to seeing you next time on New Horizons. Music.